Pints with Jack, Season 3, Episode 16. The Quizzical Papist. Good morning, and welcome to Pints with Jack, a podcast where two enthusiastic C.S. Lewis amateurs get together, share a beverage, and discuss a work of C.S. Lewis. This season we're reading Till We Have Faces. But we're not going to be reading it this episode. This episode is a bonus episode, because we're sure that everyone's lives have been turned upside down the last week or so with the coronavirus, with schools and businesses shutting down, with people being crazy at the supermarket. So Matt and I thought that we would do two episodes this week. So this episode is more of a sampler than anything else. As we mentioned on an earlier episode, both Matt and I appeared on The Quizzical Papist, which is a Catholic pub quiz podcast. It's hosted by Father Brad Doyle and Grace Krause, and they invited us on for a challenge of wits. So this episode is a 10-minute sampler of the first round of that quiz. And if you want to hear more of it, there'll be a link in the show notes. And then on Thursday, we're going to be releasing the audio of the talk that Matt gave at Notre Dame, his talk on C.S. Lewis and the authentic self. Then next week, we'll be getting back on our Till We Have Faces expert, Andrew Lazo. He's going to be coming back on and talking us through part one of Till We Have Faces, We're going to review everything, and he is hopefully going to explain everything. But before all of that, please enjoy this little section from The Quizzical Papist. Grace, take it away. I'm not going to mansplain this. (laughs) Okay. Well, um, so how we're going to do this is this is a C.S. Lewis-themed show. Um, However, the questions will, although they are C.S. Lewis-themed, they're not actually about C.S. Lewis or his works. So it's a fix. get ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued now. <laughs> yeah. So, so how we do this a lot of times is we'll do um, some sort of category that will be, well, you'll see somewhat related, but also somewhat not. Okay. So the first category, question one, um, five points is Cupid and Psyche. Question is born in seventh century Ireland. This girl became the patron saint of psychology after being martyred at the hands of her mentally ill father. I think we're locked in. Yeah, locked in. Um, So David and Matt, you guys can talk it out on the mic. What do you think, Matt? David, I've got nothing. (laughs) (laughs) Well, there must be a clue in there about the fact that it's Cupid and Psyche. I don't know. The, the only saints I can think of that are related to mental health, I think it's St. Dymphna, something like that. I'm going to be of zero assistance here. Let's go with that then. All right, you guys locked in? We're locked in. All right, so Pines with Jack locks in with St. Dymphna. And what was y'all's name again? Trapistas? Trapistas. Trapistas. It's like the tra- Trappist. Trappist. Right? But Trapistas. it's also like um, when you swing from things, what is it called? Trapeze. Trapeze artist. <laughs> We're multi-talented. We <laughs> wow. do that while juggling cheese. Hmm. I'd like to see that. What do you guys lock in with? St. Dymphna. Oh. I think we did Dymphna too. And my, my thoughts were um, Dymphna sounds kind of Greek. Um, and maybe that's what the, the whole Cupid and thing. No, but I maybe it's psychology. It is psyche psychology, uh. but also Cupid is involved. So because of love and all that. Um, so this is the story. You're, you're both correct. Um, but in oh. case you don't know the story, um, her father went crazy because his wife died. Um, and she, the daughter, Dymphna, looked just like her mother. Um, and the father, whenever he was sort of spiraling out of control in his sadness, um, he scoured the country to find a woman as beautiful as his former wife. Um, in order to marry her and he couldn't find anyone. And then he turned his eyes to his daughter who looked like his wife and tried to marry her, force her to marry him. And of course, Dymphna resisted and refused and ran away. Um, but he sent his guards after her and eventually caught up with her and her father cut off her head when she refused. Whoa. So pretty intense. Welcome to Lint. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to the show. No, I did not know that. I just yeah. knew that she was the... Patron yeah. saint of, of mental, mental illness, and, mental illness and, and stuff like that and yep. psychology. And, and I get so psyche was the connection. Gotcha. Right, right, right. But oh, also cool. like 
Cupid because he wanted to marry her. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And that, that comes from, um, till we have faces, right? Which is the current book on pints with Jack. That was an impressive question, Grace. And it's a book all about distorted love, which actually fits very nicely to that because if you want to marry your daughter, I would say that's probably distorted. Pretty distorted. Yep. Yeah. It's a, it's a, uh, it's arrows gone awry. Mm. Question number two, (laughs) question number two category is Eagle and child. The question is, the eagle is an ancient symbol for John's gospel, which, quote, soars above the synoptic gospels with its high theology and emphasis on Christ's divinity. Which gospel is represented by the winged man as it emphasizes Christ's humanity? Uh, the trapistas are locked in. I was about to say my it's guess Matthew is Matthew because that was always more the historical gospel. Well, that's actually kind of depend on which early church father you talk to, but yeah, Matthew. Okay. Trapistas? Well, I, when I was younger, I think you, you see these, the images, so I think it comes from Ezekiel. Is it Ezekiel or Isaiah? Um, where the, the original, like the, the four, four living creatures, living creatures. And I thought it was like, if I had to take Daniel. a guess, I would say Isaiah, but that's just me guessing. I think it's Ezekiel. Cause there's some crazy crap in Ezekiel. <laughs> there's some crazy stuff in other. Ones that's too, true. Like but anyway, so there's four it. animals and, and then obviously that's played out like the early church fathers, okay, the four evangelists and, but they're winged creatures. And I always thought it was an angel that represented Matthew. Um, but it's not, it's just a winged man. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's Matthew is the, the gospel and the other gospels are a lion for. Not Luke, Mark. because Luke is the ox. So it's, yep. um, yeah, Mark. David got yeah. it. Mark. Yeah. Yeah. So Matthew is correct. That is, so he has, Matthew has the genealogy. Um, so, well, so, so does Luke, but Matthew begins his gospel with the genealogy to show Jesus's relation to David, that he actually has this like human ancestry and all of that kind of stuff. So I just want to say shout out to church architecture and art because the parish that I grew up in had the four, those four images mm. um, and like the apse of the altar. Um, and so I just, every Sunday going and I, before I knew the symbolism of just to be able to look at the imagery and to have that in kind of my creative imagination. And so when I finally learned it, I was like, oh, it wasn't something foreign to me. It was like, oh, I know those images. And it was only later that I understood the meaning behind it, but just how powerful the the beauty of churches can be and how it's catechetical, even when we're just sitting in Sunday when you're a kid, you're just like, okay, looking at, you know, whatever there is to look at. And, <laughs> well, that's why I plan yeah. on actually putting the four uh, living creatures in the cry room <laughs> so that the babies can really just soak it up in there and they can. Alex just, will be very pleased. I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm <laughs> this is what I wrote my thesis on. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> cry rooms? No. Okay. no. You guys are doing good. Um, category is the four loves. The Archbishop of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love is the relatively well-known Charles Chaput. Oh, man, I knew that. Who happens to be one half Native American. Appropriately, he is also a friar, which means brother, of which specific religious order? This is terrible. I met him three months ago at a dinner. I should know this. He gave a talk. <laughs> no way. <laughs> and this didn't come up in conversation. <laughs> Pines for Jack locked in. Ooh, Okay. Talk mm, it out. We're, I'm guessing because I have no idea. Well, I thought there was, um, I know there was the Franciscan at some point up in the Northeast, started with an M, um, but I never knew Chaput was actually religious, one, um, and the, when you hear Friar, the easiest guess is what? A Franciscan. Franciscan, um, but any mendicant order is they're called friars so i think technically like dominicans, dominicans could be under the first my first guess was just dominicans and maybe that's just because i was listening to your podcast with the dominicans so um he could have been like a line order chef you know like a friar <laughs> <laughs> boo <laughs> what <laughs> we're the we're the trappists we make cheese <laughs> um let's say Dominican. Is that cool? Yeah, that was my first intuition. Just, so it's not right off. It's not it's not right off the bat. It's just it's kind of hidden. It's a little sneaky move by Grace. All right. Trapeze says lock in with Dominicans. Uh Matt and David, what do you guys lock in with? 
Well, since Matt had met him, I asked him what color his habit was. And he then basically listed every single color of the rainbow because he couldn't quite remember. <laughs> That's an interesting order right there. To be fair, I've seen pictures of Chapu with just with regular clerics on, so I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, we're going to go with Franciscan. Oh, no. Okay. Um, hmm. Can you guys be more specific? Oh, okay. So he's a kind of Franciscan, uh, uh, should we say, Capuchin? Oh, yes. I'd go with that. Oh, that would be hilarious. That is I, it. I re- what? Now that you <laughs> yes. say that, they introduced him that OFM way. With him, Capuchin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Capuchin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the kind of help that Matt gives me in the podcast after I've done all the hard work. Yeah, that, totally. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was kind of, I don't know, appropriate in my mind that he was Franciscan just because, like, he's half Native American. You know, the whole thing about, like, nature and just, I don't know, it just seemed, like, fitting to well, me and that it's he like, Franciscan. Capuchin <laughs> Chapu. So yeah, it's very it sounds similar. similar. Yeah, it does. It does. David, did any of my colors associate with that? No. <laughs> so he, um, what's cool is, I don't know if you guys have read any books by him, but he has one or two books about just being an American Catholic. Um, but I think he has kind of a cool ancestry to talk about that because he's half Native American, but he's also half French Canadian. Um, so like his ancestors were, were French Canadian. So just, I don't know. I thought it was kind of a cool, like American Catholic, um, background. So anyways, yeah, I, have, I have his book, strangers in a strange land. Yeah, me too. I've read part of it. I make my, my junior church history class read the second chapter, which is sort of a rapid overview of the history of Catholicism in America. And I think it does a pretty good job of setting up like, what our position is as Catholics speak and how different that was than the rest of the European nations at the time, like coming from a more Catholic background, we were the opposite. So mm-hmm. I need to read that. Yeah. I wish yeah. I read that at that age. <laughs> I wish I had read that when I had, was teaching church history. <laughs> Thanks Grace. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we need to talk more. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> All right. Um, question number four theme is the great divorce. This is a closest to question, so it's a number answer, and whoever gets the closest um, will get the points. In what year did King Henry VIII finally obtain a divorce from Catherine of Aragon, the scandal which also led to his effective divorce from the Catholic Church? I need to start paying attention more. I've read dialogue concerning heresies. I've seen a man for all seasons. I should know this. So we're locked in. Uh, The trapistas are locked in. Uh, Well, my initial response is he never got a divorce from her because he didn't have the authority to do it. (laughs) Well, he never got a real annulment. You can get a divorce without getting an annulment. David, when was the the specific (laughs) date of the Reformation? 1517? I can only say 16th century. Other than that, let's pick a random number. (laughs) I know the 500-year anniversary was a couple years ago. So 1517, let's say, or eight. Let me think. He had. 17. He wrote uh, a tract against Luther. So I don't know. Let's say ten years after that, maybe. So that's so it was maybe after 20. Reformation. Ten years, you think? Ten, fifteen. Mm, okay, so 15, yeah, say ten years. Twenty-seven. That's what we're going with. Yeah, let's lock it in. <laughs> All right, pints with Jack locks in with fifteen twenty-seven trapistas. Do you want to say anything? <laughs> I have. I'm so bad with dates. Like, very, very bad with dates. So whenever anyone asks me a date question, I'm like, well. Um, <clears throat> You're like, we should go to McDonald's. We should go to Burger King. You're very bad with April dates. April 25th. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, that is the per- that's the perfect date because it's not too hot, not too cold. All you need is a light sweater. <laughs> <laughs> my so, sister's wedding anniversary <laughs> is it really that's yeah. amazing it's gonna be adam's wedding anniversary too adam oh. so um so what i uh so i yeah early 1500s is the go-to and i think luther is around 1521 officially whenever he split with the church like i think that's whenever the um but maybe it was 1518 i got it backwards but we we put 1518 i know that I was doing a word a word puzzle a crossword puzzle earlier and it said like a bride in uh, an english bride or something in 1533 and the answer was boleyn and that was one of his later wives and catherine aragon was his first wife who was 
Catholic, obviously, and Spanish. Um, and so I think that would be earlier than 1533. So we put 1518. So the answer is actually 1533 oh. because that's when he got the divorce. Oh. He was able to marry her. See, we should have talked it out. Cause I had no so. idea, but if I would have known that you had that information, I would have gone for <laughs> later. <laughs> Closer to 1533. Yeah. So the Pints oh, of Jack guys crap. get the points because yeah. 1527 is closer. So yeah, to I, answer all y'all's questions, 1517 was the year that Luther nailed the 95 theses on the door of the church. Um, but 1518? The break. So a year after that? A year after that. I don't know. And I, and I did know that... that um, Henry worked with Thomas More to refute a lot of Luther's mm-hmm. claims. Yeah, um, he, he was named and so uh, defender if of faith. I, if I, if I, and I remembered that, like, oh, it was 500 years ago because there was, like, a big thing of, like, an anniversary or whatever. And so if I would have remembered that, I could have kind of done backward math. But I basically just went to my default of, ah, dates. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then 15, if I would have talked it out, literally, I answered a crossword puzzle <laughs> today that I knew of 1533 and I'm a doofus. I thought oh, Anne Boleyn was his second. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was his second wife. Yeah. So I should have gotten it. Yeah. You, but you, off to Catherine. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Anne of Cleves. Right. That's my new like uh, exclamation. Oh like, so gosh. I don't curse. I just go Anne of Cleves. Well, <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, question number five, category inklings. I have an inkling. I'm going to get this wrong. <laughs> I don't know. The Book of Kells is an illuminated manuscript of the four Gospels. Monks who painstakingly created illuminated manuscripts like these worked in a room in the monastery called a what? Locked in. If they're locked in, David, I never even heard of the Book of Kells. Wait, we are not locked in. Yeah. Oh wait, hand, are you not locked in? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. Let's. Are you unlocked? We are. We are. Di- we thought we both knew the answer. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nobody's it could, talking there about could yet. be two answers, by the way. Oh, they're possibly. So there are two different names for them. We're locked in. What did you put down? I put scriptorium. Um, I put um, biblicum, and and the, my reasoning for biblicum is that. The basement of Notre Dame Seminary, it's our bar, <laughs> and it's called, it's the basement. It's like in the basement. I've it's been our, there. It's our pub, and we call it the Biblical. I did not know it was y'all's bar. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's the Wait, pu- is it below the library, or is it in a different uh, area? No, 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 different okay, area. You okay, haven't been that's there. that's the study room. But uh, I did take y'all on tour. You did take us Maritor, on tour. But... Um, we call it the Biblicum and the whole point is it's like where monks would go down to like copy scripture who was in the Biblicum and you put scriptorium, which sounds very similar. It, it sounds might like it's be. just different translations of the same word, honestly. But when I was studying art, I, I'm when the book of Kells came up and um, eliminated manuscripts and stuff, the scriptorium was definitely a term so i don't know you want you want to say scriptorium or biblical I'm, I'm pretty sh- I'm, I, I i was fairly confident of scriptorium well I've then never heard let's put biblical. scriptorium because i can totally imagine some doofus seminary <laughs> getting it wrong like <laughs> yeah, that's where like, they made yeah. the bibles it's the biblical <laughs> or like i can like you know think about like <laughs> so you know, it's literally like? just the word for book of bible and things like that that it just got translated differently or yeah. something oh, but sure, sure. Scriptorium, let's go scriptorium is what i remember from art history at least it's not a vomitorium <laughs> No. <laughs> okay. So, um, wait, actually, but okay. I'll tell that story later <laughs> oh about vomitorium. Lordy. Okay. Um, script, <laughs> scriptorium is what we're locking in with the trapistas. We're writing our books of the Bible. Uh, pints with Jack. Exactly the same. Whew. At least we're both wrong. wrong. (laughs) Scriptorium is correct. Um, When I search Biblicum, the only thing that comes up is it's the nickname for the Pontifical Biblical Institute, but I can't find anything about the room. Not the basement in Notre Dame Seminary. Yeah, not the basement. (laughs) Not the basement in Notre Dame Seminary. I thought thought you were going to say that. (laughs) When I search the word, all that comes up is biblical in Latin. That was close. We got out of that one. Give me some skin. (laughs) Wow. Wow. We actually talked it out. I've been, I've been telling people so many wrong things my whole life. I'm a, I'm a bad tour guide. One of the few nuggets of knowledge I actually retained for my art history classes. Elizabeth. Thank you. You're welcome. (laughs) And if people haven't seen the book, I'd recommend them to go see it. I saw it in Ireland mm, about 10, 15 years ago. It's beautiful. You can't read it. It's it's. Uh, so I want to go. Wait, Matt, are you going to the Navy Notre Dame game? Because if you are, I'm very very jealous. I'm going to Ireland uh, this year. 
Yeah, I'm going and I'm going to go 10 days early and then I'm going to stop at Oxford on my way back. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so jealous. So I, I grew you. up a massive Navy fan because my no dad way. went to the academy instead of my grandfather. And uh, actually my grandpa went to Notre Dame for a year and then transferred to the Naval Academy. But um, but we were we always grew up like big Navy fans and we were always like, we liked Notre Dame, you know? Um, and so I'm just super jealous because I would love to go. What is this football of which you are speaking? <laughs> It's the real kind, David. <laughs> it's the one where we don't use our foot very often. Um, <laughs> Makes sense. By the way, uh, a vomitorium isn't. It wasn't a really. It wasn't really a place where you go and vomit because. Why of some, are we going back to this? Really? Because I learned that in <laughs> high school. No, it's not. Like, yeah. Apparently, this is what I've heard. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I learned that like, about Roman society in high no, school. And I not think in class. it's. I think it's like literally in the uh, arenas where they would like. It's the, the doorways where it just means spew forth. So it's where people would walk out of the doorways. We need uh, Mike Wilson to check fact that. Um, check fact? Fact check that. Um, <laughs> this beer is good. I, I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's correct. Oh, really? Yeah. It's basically the exit out into an arena. <laughs> yeah. So it's a spew forth. So, so there was vomiting happening, but there wasn't a specific room for that to happen. It's amazing what you get lied to about in high school. Um, coming out of round one, we have the Trapistas with 15 and Pints with Jack with 25. That's pretty awesome. All of them correct. That rarely happens, especially when I write the episode. Woo-hoo. All right, so now we have the offertory round. Um, so the offertory round. Is- okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. As I said before, if you want to hear the rest of that episode of the Quizical Papist, there will be links in the show notes or you can just search for Quizzical Papist on your podcast app. And on Thursday, we're going to be releasing the audio from Matt's talk at Notre Dame on C.S. Lewis and the Authentic Self. And then a week today, we're going to be releasing the episode with Andrew Lasso, where he takes us through part one of Till We Have Faces and explains everything. And if your school has shut down, if your office is closed and you're now in quarantine or stuck at home, we really hope these bonus episodes will entertain you and distract you and stave off the cabin fever a little longer. And of course, anyone who supports us at $5 or more on Patreon, you can come and join us on our Slack channel and we can just ride out all of this craziness together. So please join us on Thursday for Matt's talk when we'll be going further up and further in.